Whether it was the economic growth plan, the State of the Nation address, the budget speech by the finance minister, South African employment has stood front and center. And this month's Ad Corp Employment Index showing that the status in that regard, as I was saying earlier, remains generally weak. Give us a broad overview at the top of the employment situation we're facing in the country at the moment. Well, the employment situation is bleak. Uh, we've lost uh, very nearly a million jobs uh, during the last recession, none of which have been regained, mm -hmm. and uh, very few of which we expect to be regained over the next year. I think there are two factors that are dragging on the growth, uh, jobs growth front. The first is labor laws and regulations which have made employers reluctant to hire workers and certainly permanent workers until there is clarity and resolution on the labor laws that have been proposed. Uh, those labor laws are not going to be agreed within a year. Mm. So we expect that cloud of new laws and regulations to hang over employment for the next 12 months. And the second thing is the economy, even though it's recovering and its recovery is deepening, there's a lot of uncertainty about how durable the economic recovery is. People are anxious about the RAND. People are anxious about consumer spending, about interest rates. That's not the environment in which companies expand their production capacity and add jobs. Mm -hmm. So we've got another 12 months of bad news, I think. When it comes to that legislation front, I mean, uh, how do you see things swinging from the kind of commentary and rhetoric out there at the moment? How, how are things looking in that regard? Well, let me just recap uh, quickly what those, uh, the new legislation will be. Uh, in the Employment Equity Act, uh, company directors will be able to, will be able to be sent to jail. Uh, companies will incur turnover taxes for failing to meet affirmative action mm -hmm. quotas. Uh, there's a new Employment Services Bill where basically government is going into the recruitment business in competition with private companies. Companies are going to be forced uh, to register all vacancies within 14 days and the government is then going to propose unemployed people to fill those vacancies. Uh, we've also got the Labor Relations Act which is going to um, make temporary workers redundant, they're going to be assumed to be permanent. So we've, we've got actually the most extraordinarily draconian laws uh, under discussion at the moment. How will it work out in the end? I think, uh, well business has already w walked out of NEDLAC, mm -hmm. the first time in history that business has done that, uh, which tells you how seriously they view these laws. Uh, how will it work out in the end? It's very hard to see a positive outcome. Yeah. Uh, Labour and the Department of Labour acting in concert uh, are very determined to add restrictive labour legislation. Let's take a look at implications for the temporary job market specifically because I think that's one of the facets that's really stood in the spotlight and when it mm. comes to that I mean that's exactly the arena where we've seen a substantial rise in employment this time round in February seeing an over six percent increase in temporary employment mm. as opposed to the permanent employment uh, data uh, which reveals that that declined 1.3 percent, right? Mm. Correct. Well, uh, temporary employment is becoming more and more significant in the South African economy. Currently, temporary workers represent just short of 30 percent of the total workforce in the country. Uh, so very nearly one uh, in three workers is a, is a temporary employee. Uh, temporary workers have many advantages for companies. Um, they, uh, if, if, if an employee doesn't perform well on the job, uh, you let their contract lapse. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas with permanent employees, there's a whole rigmarole that you have to go through as a company uh, to dismiss someone for poor performance. Advantages for companies, but surely, you know, if there's uh, some regulation or stiffer regulation coming to the fore on this front, we would have to see some uptick in permanent employees where the gaps that the temporary staff leave behind will have to be filled somehow and that on a more sustainable basis. So, you know, to what extent is there merit to that argument? I don't think there's going to be any uptick in permanent employment for several years. Um, remember, temporary employment was a, an innovation created by companies after the Labor Relations Act in 1995 made it extremely difficult to dismiss miss workers for various reasons. Mm -hmm. What I expect is that if we have regulations around temporary work, 
we're going to see all sorts of innovations. We're going to see growth of outsourcing, growth of subcontracting as alternatives to temporary work and, and labor broking. So companies are going to be three, four, maybe even five or six years ahead of the law. And lawmakers really are addressing an issue that arose in 1995. So I think we mustn't underestimate companies' ability to innovate in response to restrictive leg legislation. When it comes to policies and what's being put on the table, we've had the business day running with the headline today that uh, you know big business takes Zuma's delay off bridging building, uh, bridge building summit in its stride. This, of course, where we were supposed to have seen a job summit taking place. The theme there is that it was supposed to create a holistic approach to job creation. When this eventually does come to the fore, do you see anything tangible emerging? Holistic, bear in mind, means more government involvement. Uh, historically, uh, there was a reliance on the private sector to create jobs. So what is holistic now means that we're now relying on government for direct job creation. Where government has been a big driver thus far mm -hmm. and the month of February has driven employment up 5.5%. Yes, uh, we're seeing in provincial and local government, uh, partly uh, ahead of the elections, uh, suddenly the country's being spruced up. Uh, this uh, creation of temporary work in, uh, in municipalities, really dressing the country up for the upcoming municipal elections. So there's a very strong political cycle to unemployment uh, in the last few months, to employment of temporary workers. But uh, I, think, I, think, I think it's wishful thinking that government, I mean the budget if you look at it uh, recently, was really a Father Christmas kind of budget where we sort of threw a bit of money at that and nine billion at that and five billion at that. There's no, there's no holistic approach, I mean, by any uh, coherent sense of the word. Um, the State of the Nation address simply emphasized uh, job creation. But there's, there's never been talk of the causes of unemployment. Mm -hmm. Not in any serious for forum has anyone spoken about wages. Or, or dismissal protections. Yeah. And those are the two things that companies time and time again say to government are the causes of unemployment. But instead of addressing those two issues, we're addressing all sorts of sideshows. So of course it's the root of the problem that needs to be tackled. Mm. Very briefly, Leon, your outlook for the year ahead on the employment front. Yeah, the next 12 months is exceedingly bleak. Permanent staff will continue to decline. We're heading into the strike season into the next, in the next two months. I think it's going to be the biggest strike season in history in South Africa. We're going to see enormous disruptions to work, work stoppages, days lost uh, due to strikes. Uh, yes, I think we've got a very exciting, if you want to call that, labor relations outlook. Uh, temporary work, uh, it depends what the outlook for, for legislation will be, but I can't see le uh, temporary work uh, diminishing anytime soon.